Okay, welcome back to the second part. We were left with um, hypotenuse times cosine of arctangent m minus arctangent f of x. Just make sure and, and remember that this is the angle inside co cosine that we want to find equals dv. Uh, remember, we're trying to find the relationship between hypotenuse and dv and then compare it to the relationship between hypotenuse and dx, which we did previously, and then find dv d dx uh, relationship. So let's actually go and um, solve this cosine uh, angle. Well, remember here, when, when, when I look at the subtraction or addition sign, I just think about this as one angle and this as a second angle. So then we can apply the following thing. Cosine alpha minus beta. Uh, just make sure that alpha and beta are... Uh, I'm just using uh, you know uh, any variable. It's not necessarily the angles uh, that we've seen in the triangle. Equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. All right? Right there. And then let's actually go and evaluate this. This is the first angle, alpha. This is the second angle, beta. So, cosine arctangent m minus, let's start with first, cosine of arctan m. Remember, we can use our triangle right here. m1, last missing part, m1 square root of m square root of m squared plus 1. So, cosine of uh, this would simply be 1 over square root m squared plus uh, 1. Okay, and then cosine of uh, beta, arctangent f prime of x, we'll use the same triangle. We're going to use the same triangle for all of them. f prime of x1, and here the square root f prime x squared plus 1. Alright, so cosine of beta, that's go simply going to be 1 over f prime of x squared plus 1. Alright, now we have to do plus sine of alpha right here. So Sine of alpha is just going to be opposite or hypotenuse. That's simply going to be m over m squared minus m squared plus 1. And then the last part, sine of beta, sine of arctangent is simply going to be f prime of x divided by square root f prime of x squared plus 1. Alright, so let's actually gather this together. Here we see that uh, we have common denominators, so we can just write square root I'm writing the denominator, f prime x squared plus 1 by, and here that's 1, plus m f prime of x, and we've evaluated so far, and of course, this was multiplied, remember, times hypotenuse, let's put that in, let's not forget, hypotenuse equals dv. Alright, so we have just found a successful for um, relationship between hypotenuse and dv. Everything has been evaluated. Now, let's compare our relationships between um, dv hypotenuse and dx hypotenuse. Alright, so now I'm trying to find the paper I had right here. Okay, just give me a one second. Okay, I found it. It's right here. We had hypotenuse 1 over square root f prime of x plus 1 equals dx. And here we have a much longer function, hypotenuse 1 plus m f prime of x divided by this equals dv. Now, we're, I'm going to isolate for hypotenuse and then cancel them out. Okay, so here it looks more obvious for me to do the following. I want to isolate hypotenuse. Hypotenuse equals dx times square root f prime of x squared plus 1. Alright, we know what the hypotenuse is, we can actually go in and plug it into this hypotenuse. And I'll just get a second piece of paper and I'll do that right now. Alright. So we know the following. Hypotenuse 1 plus f prime of x. But now we know what the hypotenuse is and we've seen it from here. Alright, so let's actually write, write that. You're right. Because we're replacing a substitution. f prime of x squared plus 1, alright. And then we can go times our original function that we had. All we did is a substitution divided by what we had in the bottom. Square plus 1 times square root f prime of x square plus 1. And now I really get excited when things just cancel out because it gets simpler. That cancels out and remember this was equal to dv. So now we have dx 1 plus m f prime of x divided by square root m squared plus 1 equals dv. So now remember, this equals our little width. 
it's so insignificant, but the width is still ex existed. Now, remember, um, when we originally did disk method, it was simply this. Right? Well, same idea. Right here, this R squared is simply going to be uh, uh, what, uh, what, what, what the radius was in this case. So in this case, it'll be, remember, uh, in the previous video, we did f of x minus mx minus b divided by uh, square root m squared plus 1, of course, times pi. And then, our, as, as we've isolated right here, we're writing things in dv form. We write 1 plus m f prime of x divided by square root m squared plus 1 times dx. We actually ha we can actually cancel some things out. Okay, so we have the following. Now remember this uh, this radius that, that we found. If you don't recall, I'll put on the picture. This radius from here to here is the radius if we would have had with any other uh, volume. So we must square it. Okay, so we're going to square it, and this dx will remain unsquared. And all we have to do now is just. Um, if, um, I simplify. So I'll go along and simplify. So we're left with f of x minus mx minus b squared over, uh, in this case, it'll be m squared plus 1 because you know the square roots cancel out, integral of pi times, of course, 1 plus m f prime of x. Oh, we can't cancel that out. But here you notice that we have common terms, n squared plus 1 raised to the half. And this m, m is going to be a constant, so we can actually remove this out. So if we multiply this, this together, that's 2 over 2 plus 1 half, that's 3 over 2. We're left with <coughs> pi m squared plus 1, 3 over 2 times integral of f of x minus mx minus b squared 1 plus m f prime of x and of course we had a dx right here dx so of course from a to b whatever interval you want this would actually uh, evaluate the, the the volume of revolution just from finding the, the area all we did was just m manipulate the idea of the axis for like interim uh, we were imposing the dv into dx or d, dx into dv, whichever ideal you want, and we found a, a respectable function in here. And if you plug the, the respective values in here, you will actually find the volume of revolution about a slant line. Thank you.